Hello again, Karina here. Um, I just wanted to go over a few things about airbrushes and the things that you might need to know. So there's two types of main airbrushes, more or less, um, but we have a single action and a dual or a double action airbrush. Now a single action, this is my Clarella airbrush and uh, it's very easy to use and it's a single action airbrush because you don't have control over the air that comes out of it. There's a constant stream of air that circulates throughout it and um, by pulling back the trigger you're not releasing the air, you're releasing the paint. The paint is then allowed um, through and by pulling back the toggle you or the trigger you are opening up that hole you're bringing the needle back into the airbrush and opening up that hole which then allows in more air and more paint to come through so that's the single action and this is my Iwata which is a double or a jewel and this one is different because you get full control over the air that comes through it as well. So it is clunkier, it's um, a little bit more difficult to use, um, but you've got more control over it. So both are excellent and I love both equally. I use them depending on what, probably my go-to is probably the Clarella, but um, yeah, I use both. So, uh, this one you have to push down to activate the air to come through and then you pull back and that increases the airflow and the um the airflow and the paint the amount of paint that's actually released so uh you this is the compressor that's part of it and you can increase the pressure and on the clarella one you can increase the power using going through the different modes from min to max so those, those are the two basic airbrushes and they use different paints. So I'll just show you first off the airbrushes and then the paints. So this is the single action and you can tell that you just have to pull it back. That's the only option that you have. So it still works perfectly. You can still get great coverage and good detail, but this only controls the amount of paint that comes through the nozzle and through there you can see that little pin point that's the needle and when I pull back the trigger the needle gets pulled back and um, that's how the paint gets through from the cup and it's pushed out with the air this is the the dual action and okay so I push down to allow the air to flow and then I pull back to allow the paint to come out. Okay, Magic Colors, they have a thicker consistency in them. You can see just barely there that it's it's a thicker paint and for the single action you need to use a liquid paint and you can see here this is as thin as water really. Both are fine and they'll do the same job but um, it just makes sure that you, you use the correct airbrush paint for the correct airbrush. Otherwise you'll get clogs and it'll start spitting and all of that. So and finally if you are airbrushing a good bit um, I would recommend getting an airbrushing mask okay because you don't want to be breathing in this um, this paint all the time. Now it is edible and all the rest but you know still. So yeah and it's quite fetching as well. So highly recommend getting a good mask like this with the two filters on the side okay but what I want to show you are these little templates and worksheets that I've given you you don't have to use them it's not mandatory but it is helpful just to get a little practice and get used to your airbrush even for myself like if I haven't used it for a while I kind of you know you, it's good to just have a little go just to make sure you know exactly where the paint is coming out and re remembering the pressure and uh, how far to pull the triggers back so um, we are going to have a go at that we're going to do uh, we're going to start off with some small dots using our the grid and we'll just make little dots and then we'll try to increase in size and just to get control over the trigger and the airbrush 
After that, we're going to work on making um, lines, um, thick lines, thin lines, try to keep a steady hand. It's okay if you go over the lines though, it's fine. Um, but, and then we're going to try to do like tiger stripes as well and just uh, get gradient and control on your strokes. Okay, so we are going to get started. Now I've got my practicing airbrush, I've got the grid first for a start. Okay, so we are going to be just creating little dots, just tiny little dots. We're going to be using the airbrush and getting quite close and it, with the dual action we're going to push down and pull back very very gently and we're just going to practice our aim okay so we're going to you might end up coming off of it it's not the end of the world just uh this is just a practice sheet so we'll just have a go and don't it's not a race we want to take our time on this and we just want to learn where the airbrush is aiming for okay so that's what we're going to start with. And then we're going to do from small to large dots. We're just trying to get control over the airbrush. Small to large dots and large to small and teeny tiny ones and all the rest, okay? So we're going to give that a go. Go with blue today. Now, when you open up your airbrush containers, please be careful because sometimes they splatter. So before we do on the actual practice sheet, let's just get a piece of kitchen paper and make sure that everything is just working well. So I've got my cup and I'm just going to only, I'm only going to put a little bit in there. One, two, three drops for a start. Okay. So I'm just going to push down, you can see the air come through, okay, and as I pull back, that's when the color comes through. So you don't need the practice sheets, you can just get a, any piece of paper, kitchen, kitchen towel, paper, whatever you call it, anything like that. Um, so that's for the dots. Now when we're doing lines, when we're doing lines, you want to do a continuous continuous motion. So if I am just static here and I draw a line, you end up with these two dots on either side. That's because more paint is coming out as the airbrush is static. You don't want that. Okay, so what we need to get used to is to have a continuous motion and to start and stop the paint in, in that motion. So if I move the airbrush, I pull the paint back, I pull the paint up and then back out. We go again. Okay, so pulling it back, letting go, pulling it back, letting go, pulling it back, letting go, okay? So that's how to not get those two dots, is to have a continuous motion. You can go closer. For a stronger line. Okay, so it's all working. We have no splatter marks. It doesn't need an extra clean before we get started. So that is good. Now things that you do not want to happen are the splatter. So stuff where, where any moment that the, the airbrush is in one position for too long, the paint saturates. Now on your fondant, you definitely don't want that because that's just going to um, saturate your fondant in that area. So we wanna, like if you need a very strong color, do one, let it dry for a minute or two or whatever. You can build up the area that way, okay? You can build up the color that way. But you never want to just saturate it all in one. Okay, so we're ready for the practice sheet. So we're gonna aim for each of these little corners, wherever the intersecting, wherever the intersecting lines are, okay? So air, air on going to get one little dot each. And do not rush, take your time. Let's get these guys too. And you just want to try and get it 
until you're comfortable with where the paint comes out of the airbrush and that you'll be able to aim properly. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with where the paint is coming and my aim is okay. Now I'm going to try to control how large or small the airbrushing dots are. So I'm going to start small, see how small I can get. Here's one, two, we're going to get bigger, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So for that, all I've done is I've started small and I've started close, close to the page. Oop, right, now I'm pulling back a tiny bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, more, more. And each time I'm letting out a little bit more, more paint. If I don't let out more paint, the, it's, it'll just be fainter. So that's what we want to do for the first one, is to just get a sheet of controlled dots that you know where, where the paint is coming out of the airbrush and your aim is reasonably good and your control over the size of the dots is pretty good. Okay, and these are practice sheets for a reason, you know, print them out, keep going, give it a go. Um, for the next one, what we want to do is to practice those lines, how we had the controls lines, okay? Okay, so this one here is just all of the lines that we're going to try. Now the first three or four lines on the top, they're just for practice. You don't have to go exactly on them. Your aim is to try to get on the line, but you know, that comes, uh, that comes with time and even I have, I struggle sometimes. So, um, but we're going to take our time. Remember to start off the page, release the air if you have a dual action, um, pull back for the paint while you're moving, pull release the trigger while you're moving and continue off and then you'll end up with a nice nice even line and no dots on either side okay we'll give that a go So we've got our practice lines, there's no dots on the, on the start or the end. So now we're going to do some tiger stripes, okay? So we're going to try to control the line. So we're going to start wide with the trigger pulled back off the page and we're going to come close and we're going to narrow it down into a point. So you'll get these kind of little, nice little tiger stripes. It's just a nice little way to get kind of used to your airbrush. didn't work so well. So pull back, bring it close and release. 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 Back, close and release. Okay, I have another sheet for you to practice with. And this one is, it's just shapes, okay? It's just to get used to moving the airbrush in different motions and to follow lines. Now, the following lines, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's just an idea just to get used to, to moving in different directions, okay? So we'll just give a few a go here, and then we'll move on to the last bit of practice that I'd like you to try. Now stencils for airbrushing are amazing and they're fun. So what I have, I have a load of different types. I've got ones, you know, you can get ones that are like, you know, like flames and uh, you can, they're, some of them are an absolute fortune, but it's like, you know, for shark or uh, for like seawater and waves and things like that. Um, or you can make your own. There's, there's these stencils as well. These are, this is actually one from Clarella and it just has a, a whole load of different shapes on it 
that makes it um, handy for just getting around any corner or edge or anything. It's pretty much got everything on it, on the one, which is great. you find that on her website as well. And uh, then you can make your own as well. So this is a piece of cutting board that I got from a discount shop. And I just took an X-Acto blade and uh, cut it into a random shape. Now in the class we are going to be using stencils, so I just kind of want to go over how to use a stencil and what effects it gives. So for a start, what we are going to do is just use the airbrush um, with the stencil attached to the page, like flat, flush against the page, okay? So we'll just start here. I'm just aiming for that top edge there. Okay, and you can see we get a nice sharp edge with a gradient off of it, okay? Now, if I do that again, but I don't have the stencil right against the page and I bring it forward a bit, you'll get the same shape, but a softer gradient, okay? So there's no none of that sharp edge. You go a little bit closer, it gets a little sharper, but it's not that complete. So you can play with a lot of this. You can get like cloud effects or mountain ranges or whatever you want. There's there, the sky's the limit with this here. So and you can overlay them as well. So that's pretty much everything that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, now, don't forget, after you use your airbrush, you have to rinse, the, rinse it through. So what I do is I bring my airbrush over to the sink. Um, I rinse the water through the cup and spray it through until it runs clear. Um, you might want to do a deep clean, and I'm going to give you a link to, to, to uh, Clarella airbrush and she has a few videos a few free videos on how to clean your airbrush so there's no point in me re-saying what she's already said so i will send that to you as well and go have fun use it get used to it get comfortable with it like it's it's great crack <laughs> it's good fun so um yeah make sure you uh you get used to your airbrush and i will see you at the class and i'm looking forward to it See you then!